Hello, welcome to this course on operating systems and system software. Let us look at the course objective and the syllabus that is going to be covered in this course and the references. This course objective is mainly to introduce the basics of operating system. It also provides an overview of what are the popular operating systems in the market. First, we'll start with understanding processes, threads, and different states of processes and their priorities. This will prepare you to understand about what are the different kinds of modes in the OS, user mode and kernel mode, how does user processes run with the help of OS, and what are the services provided by the OS in the kernel level. Then we will get into understanding the schedulers and different algorithms that are being used for scheduling different processes on the CPU. Then the most important services of requirement of OS is to manage the memory. That's the main memory that we have in our systems. How does it manage? How does it provide a fair share of the memory to different processes running on the system? So it also covers about virtual memory and memory management and both the hardware and software aspect of implementing memory management in a system. So there is a support required from the CPU side as well as OS needs to take the feature supported and provide the virtual memory management that processes need. Then we learn something about the concurrency and mutual exclusion, then inter-process communication among processes as well as with the kernel and various synchronization mechanisms supported by the operating systems. Finally, we will try to understand about the deadlocks and how to prevent them, then a file system which is most important part of OS and how does the IO is managed. So we are not going to be covering about any device drivers or anything in this course. This will give you an overview of operating system and processes, memory management and the IPC mechanisms provided by the OS. This course also has a system software aspect of it which is covered as a part of the lab wherein we will be using Windows subsystem for Linux for running an Ubuntu system on Windows environment. We will learn more about how different processes or how tools are used in the Unix environment or Linux environment. Then we will also understand about the data models supported by Linux and Windows and go, go into the details of little bit on the shell scripting, then how processes and threads are created using POSIX interface and many more. So we'll start with the evolution of OS, cover topics on processes and threads and what is PCB, process control block. Then get into the different types of schedulers being used by an OS and what are their functionalities and a couple of scheduling algorithms and their relevance in the OS. P4 is first in first out, round robin is one type of uh, scheduler and shortest process next. That means the process which is going to take the shortest time to complete will be taken first so that the processes get completed as early as possible. Then shortest remaining time based on how much time it is left to complete its running or a, a completion of process. Then we will get into memory management which is most important part of the OS and what are the different mechanisms like paging and segmentation and different policies used for managing the pages on the main memory. Least recently used, leaf are a couple of uh, very popular policies which are being used. Then we will understand inter-process communication mechanisms like semaphores, message queues, monitors and signals. Deadlock is one which needs to be avoided so that your system is always running so how does the OS help you in preventing deadlock and even identifying it before preventing it? So these are the important topics that are going to be covered in this course. Later on, we will end it with IO management and disk schedulers and so touch upon the file management. The references are William Sterling, a very good book, gives you overview of what is an OS and how uh, different design principles are being used internally. It's not specific to any particular OS, but it gives you a overview of a general operating system 
which will be an initial book to read to get into OS. This is another interesting book which gives you much more details into the implementation and I strongly suggest that you read both or uh, if not at least one. Then Tenenbaum is a good overview of OS. You can read that and RP2040 data sheet is here which is a Raspberry Pi board which will be used in the later part of the labs to show you how multi-processing applications can be developed and run on the hardware. There are a couple of uh, manuals related to that. Now let us get into what are the popular operating systems that are there in the market. Of course, desktop or laptop OSs and some of them are mobile OS. Now the most popular OTAS we'll see which is real-time operating system meant for embedded devices have they have a real time constraints and they need to make sure that the deadlines are met always. Now let us look at the popular desktops OSS or laptop OSS. We have Microsoft which is the company name and the Windows is the OS. Apple, Mac OS. Then we have Ubuntu open source Linux based operating system which we will be using it that runs on the Windows subsystem for Linux in the Windows environment. Now there are many more Linux flavors which are very popular. Linux Lite is meant for embedded applications or IoT applications which is basically a Linux underneath and a reduced version of that. Then Fedora is also another popular Linux flavors of OS. Then let us look at the mobile OSs. I'm sure all of you are aware. Android which is taken over by Google long time back and it is actually built on Linux kernel. Then we also have iOS which is run on all the Apple mobile systems. Then we also have Autos and I am showing you WindRiver VX was as one of the popular operating systems there in that market. So, there are a couple of interesting links that I have provided and I urge you to go through them to learn more about this. Now, IoT is the most important and most uh, which is coming up in the recent times and billions of devices are going to be there in the field and many of them do run operating systems which are shown here many of them and uh, when we take up Raspberry Pi Pico, we would be running the ARM based board, which is Raspberry Pi Pico, would be running a embed OS on it. And I also suggest that you can look at the free autos, which is most popular in the real time operating system world, which is shown in the middle. This has a source code also, you can look at it and understand how a real operating system is implemented in C. Now, why should you study OS? It's key part of the operating system or a computer system. So, even when you get into an industry, you are going to be using computer systems or even the mobile that you are using runs the OS. So, having a good understanding of OS gives you a good standing on developing some application that runs on the OS. So, including embedded systems, nowadays there is a OS which is called RTAS that I explained to you just now. So application needs to run on the OS. So if the application need to take the features supported by the OS and then try to design the applications which are taking the exploiting the features of OS as well as performs well on the operating system. So if you want to know that you need to have an understanding of the OS, what to, how to design your applications that is suited for running on an OS. And for developing reliable and efficient applications, you, you must have a knowledge of OS. It is essential for electronics engineers also to know and have good understanding of OS because when you are developing any CPUs or hardware features, you need to have understanding of the OS because finally hardware needs to run on, run some software on it and most probably the high-end CPUs are going to be interfaced with OS and they need to talk to the operating system and they have to provide the instructions 
and features on the hardware which can be exploited by the OS. So the engineers, system engineers or hardware engineers who design CPUs as well as various features of OS hardware or a CPUs or memory interfaces, they need to have a better understanding of OS too. So this is a very essential course for both ECE and CSC background students and even the guys who are working on the VLSI and design of CPUs and different memory systems need to have a better understanding of OS. And of course, if you are designing any peripheral devices or even Bluetooth based uh, uh, equipments or devices, you need to have an understanding of OS. Now Linux is widespread now and from the high-end servers to the low-end power you know, embedded systems. So we want Linux as a back background OS which is being taught here in this course in our lab part of the course where we will be developing some applications and building some libraries as well as writing small shell script and understanding the data models of OS, different OSs as well as we will be developing a lot of applications using the O6 interface, creating threads, processes as well as IPC mechanisms like semaphores and message queues. So it's going to be an interesting journey going through both theory part of the OS as well as the lab part of the system software side of the operating system course. Now different OS lab exercises are going to be focused on making you a understanding or giving you an understanding of how does Linux work. We are not going into details of every part of Linux implementation but at least as a user you should be able to understand what is happening underneath. So the reason that you need to know OS is because all the equipments that we see, electronic devices are going to be having OS running on them. So it's essential for any engineer to know OS fundamentals and having a stronger understanding of OS will give you a head start into industry as well as to venture into any part of the software side or on the hardware part of the advanced designs or advanced implementation of OS or any other software systems. So welcome you again and I am looking forward to sharing whatever I know with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you in the next lecture. Bye.